So what are Miller indices? They are a set of whole numbers to represent a plane or a direction inside a single crystal. In many semiconductor processing steps, precise surface orientation is critical and directly affects the device's characteristics. We need a systematic way to represent different crystallographic planes and directions within a single crystal, and the Miller indices are for this purpose. This picture shows that single crystal silicon wafer surface is carefully aligned to lie in a specific crystallographic plane, and a flat cut is ground along the edge to identify a reference direction within the surface plane. The top surface is represented by its Miller indices 1, 0, 0, and the upward direction perpendicular to this plane is represented by its Miller indices 0, 0, 1. Then how do we get these Miller indices numbers? Here is a procedure for a crystallographic plane. In the next slide, we will talk about the procedure for a direction. We follow a very simple step-by-step -step procedure to get the Miller indices for a plane within a single crystal. First, we need a coordinate system, so we set up a coordinate axis along the edges of the unit cell. In this simple cubic cell, it's the x, y, z axis. Then let's look at the plane of interest, and write down the values where it intercepts the axis. For this example, it is a for x axis, one half of b for y axis, and 3c for z axis. Then we divide these values by the unit cell length along the respective axis. So a divided by a is 1 for x axis, 1 half of b divided by b is 1 half for y axis, and 3c divided by c is 3 for z axis. Now we need to invert the values. So 1 over 1 is 1 for x axis, 1 over 1 half is 2 for y axis, and 1 over 3 is 1 third for z axis. Then we multiply these numbers by a minimum possible integer, so these numbers become the smallest possible whole numbers. For this particular case, we need to multiply with the number 3, and we get 3, 6, 1 as the final numbers. Lastly, enclose this set of whole numbers inside a pair of curly brackets. So curly bracket 3, 6, 1 is the Miller indices for this plane. This picture shows more examples of Miller indices for different planes. There are two special cases we need to take care of. First, if the plane is parallel to an axis, the intercept along that axis is marked as infinity. When you invert infinity, you get the number 0. This is why you see 0 such as 1, 0, 0, which is parallel to y and z axis, 1, 1, 0, which is parallel to z axis, etc. Second, if the plane intercepts an axis in the negative portion, the minus sign is placed on top of the corresponding number, such as this minus 1, 0, 0 plane. The Miller indices for a direction are established by decomposing a vector in the direction into its components. Let's look at the 1, 2, 0 direction in this example. This vector's x-axis projection value is 1 half, y-axis projection value is 1, z-axis projection value is 0. We then multiply these numbers by 2, so the results will be a set of the smallest possible whole numbers. Thus we get 1, 2, 0. We then enclose them inside a pair of square brackets. This is a convention for Miller indices of a direction. We take care of directions parallel to axis and negative numbers the same way as for planes as we pointed out in the last page. Lastly, here are some more direction examples and you can practice getting their Miller indices.